I'm Big Will Levinson, and it's time to talk sports. So we have told you all about our excitement for Saturday's big one, the two-way state championship between Rifle and Delta. It's a Western Slope showdown, but now it's time to get you ready. Let's look back to September 15th. These two went at it up in Rifle, and, well, there is no doubt. Delta was the better team in this one. Delta's D-line was punishing all night, getting tremendous push. And look, we know how talented rifle quarterback Logan Gross is, but he made a couple mentor errors in this one, like, like right here, throwing it up for grabs. He is going to have to take care of the football on Saturday, but it is clear that the Bears are not the same team we saw back in September. And Rifle knows that that loss made them more focused than ever before. I mean, it obviously sucks to lose, and we've talked about it as a team, but it's probably one of the best things that happened to us. You know, it, it kind of brought us down to earth, and we saw that things that we can work on, things that we can do better, um, and we learned a lot from it. We learned that, you know, we got to rally. we got to play a complete game. We can't, can't just give up stuff that, that we don't normally do. Delta's obviously a good program, but at the same time, that was one of the best things that happened to us this year because it allowed us to rally around each other. I think that showed our whole team that, you know, we're not invincible. There's always going to be somebody better, and we just want to be better. You know, we, we lose to Delta. A lot of discipline has came with that. You know, we've been held more accountable. We've been told, do better at this, do better at that. We can't slack off. You know, we got to be ready for them. And folks, in case you haven't heard, the two-way state title game is moving from Pueblo to Grand Junction. This huge battle between Rifle and Delta is coming to Stoker Stadium this Saturday at 1 p.m. And there is no doubt it's going to be an atmosphere for the ages but we switch gears a bit to talk some college volleyball because the NCAA Division II Women's Volleyball Tournament bracket is set and the CMU Mavs at 24 and 4 are a four seed and they'll be headed to Canyon Texas for the West Texas A&M Regional and in round one the Mavs will be taking on the five seed Patriots of DBU and these two actually met months ago way back on September 9th and at Bronson Arena the Mavs got the sweep over the pass everyone will get a week off for Thanksgiving before this tournament begins next Thursday a win for the Mavs and they will get the winner of one seed West Texas A&M and eight seed UT Tyler. And in the D2 Women's Soccer Tournament, we told you all about the Mavs win on Sunday. But here's a look at how it happened. Savaline Randell hitting the back of the net to give the Mavs the one to nothing lead in the 107th minute and eventual victory in round two of the NCAA tournament over in Colorado Mines. And the fans that made the trip there to Mines were pumped and golden and with the big win, CMU will be headed back home next Thursday to take on UCCS in round three. And in high school boys basketball, as we switch now, Chassa released their preseason rankings for the 2023 season set to begin next week. And here are the Class 2A rankings. Leading the way is Ray, the defending state champions. But take a look at number seven. How about the Cowboys of Plateau Valley? The school is essentially the size of most 1A schools, but they are still among the best in 2A. After a fifth place finish last season, Plateau Valley is ready to roll this year to make a run at a state title. The Cowboys will open up their season a week from Thursday in Aspen. High school basketball season is right around the corner and we are ready to get it rolling. But that's all my time for sports. I'm Big Will Evanson.